Hey, so I got a question from the community about this part. And they asked, like, isn't there a way that we can put this evenly if I wanted three of these on each face all the way around? And of course, immediately I'm thinking about a pattern. Unfortunately, a circular pattern is going to create this circular effect. It's in the name. And I don't know how to do it with a rectangular pattern and make it turn all these corners. But here's my design criteria. Use one feature to pattern all of this. Get the spacing even. And I don't want to invest the time to do it with complicated math. So in the part, if I search for pattern on path, I'm going to select the features that I want. Select the cutout extrude and the two chamfers that are a part of this cut. I'll go to the path and here's what's cool is you actually can use pattern on path around this rectangle or square. It doesn't have to just be a curve or a straight line. But here's the challenge. As soon as I start to play with this, I bumped into the problem of I want to go all the way around right up until the other part and then we'll figure out the spacing. I know that I want three of these on each face. That should be 12 instances. Let's type that in. I know that from my other video I talked about when you need the features to reorient themselves, come over to the orientation and try the path direction. That looks better. When I go to my top view, I can get a little bit better view of these features as they're solving can see the problem, right? There's this overlap in the corners, all these different things happening. I just have this problem of how to solve for the fact that I need some built-in spacing different than between each instance. And I think there's probably a few ways to solve this, but one way I think I could do it is overdo it on the instances. So if we add some more to where there's basically an extra one in each corner, what's cool about this is I can come in and suppress these corner ones that are not needed, but they create the spacing effect that I want. I can look just visually and I can see these don't line up. So, and neither left or right are these even and lining up in a symmetrical way. As I play with the spacing, I'm getting a little bit closer to what I want. I can adjust how far back this one solves. So I can kind of play with the spacing this way these are looking pretty good. Now, is there a way I can actually even verify that these are lining up and the design is, is effectively symmetrical? Like this looks good, but I don't really know for sure. So let's just accept it fails. Bummer. Trying again. I'm going to just try to solve it really quickly and just see if the problem is the compute style. And instead of adjust, I'm going to try optimized and then try identical. If I try optimized, it did work. Great. So it's it's patterning. It looks good. It's just not correct yet. It hasn't hit my design intent, which is to have everything symmetrical. So as I kind of adjust the ending, now I want to confirm that these are actually all lined up. I'll click OK. And this is, again, I know this is the manual method and not the cool math method. And I'm looking forward to the comments from the community for sure. By the way, I've created a library of fusion resources totally free. Go check it out. Okay, so now here's my challenge. I need to make sure things line up. I just want to be able to visually inspect it. Um, I can't think of a good way to do it with measure. So I'm going to try a sketch. I'm going to sketch just kind of in the middle. I'll bring the sketch plane down any distance just so I can see the cross section basically. But I'm going to use a sketch so that I can sketch lines and the, make sure that everything lines up. When I create a sketch here, I'm going to use that tool that we've talked about before called slice. It slices it. Now project is where it will redraw whatever edges you want on the sketch you're in. But project is quirky. It doesn't always work. Like I hit P for project and I cannot do all this without like manually going in and selecting everything. I can't seem to do it with the body for some reason. So in this sketch, we've sliced it, and now we're gonna go find a new projection tool. I'll go to project, and instead of the standard project like I was trying, I'm gonna go to intersect. This one creates the intersection between any active sketch things, like sketch curves and model geometries, 
across the active sketch plane. Perfect. That's what I want. I'll hit intersect and then I'll choose the body and I'm going to use keep it, keep the link alive so that it's basically intelligent or tied to the design of the body. Meaning if I change these patterns, this projected sketch will be accurate. So I'll click OK. So it's basically tied to whatever the geometry does. If we make a change, it changes. Coming in and investigating. Let's hide the body. We'll click the visibility. And I want to sketch a line from the midpoint to this midpoint. But I want this to be vertical. And I want a little midpoint right here. So I'm going to go to point and add a point right in the middle of our design. Great. And if I were to kind of drag this across, if we zoom in really tight, because this is pretty darn accurate. It looks like it's close enough. Let's sanity check the other ones. That looks good. And when I sketch this last line, these line up too. So this is looking pretty great. I got really lucky just in when I was patterning it and playing with the instances. Looks like it lines up, but I've been using the sketch method to just validate everything. So there we go. We have three instances on each face, evenly spaced, matching. It was one feature pattern on path. Kind of an interesting design challenge. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.